Hello there, and welcome back to Passionate People and Preposterous Peeves. We are knee-deep in Season 2, and I really appreciate you coming back and spending this time with us. I'm your host, Ike, and before we get too far underway, I'd like to ask you one question. Do you enjoy this podcast? If this is your first time, feel free to listen before you answer that. But if you're a returning guest, or listener, however we're <laughs> naming ourselves, would you mind doing me one favor and make sure that you're subscribed? And then if you still have the energy, if you would like or share this podcast, that'd be terrific. So last, I believe, we spoke, I was talking about how I was headed to Atlanta literally the day of that recording. Uh, I've since returned, and things did not go as dreamt or, you know, one might hope. However, I did get to spend a lot of time with uh, some past guests and Dan and Max Millikman and uh, my cousin, Zachary Pope, and... It was a lot of fun. Got some, uh, you know, good old shallow and cooking. Actually, didn't get that much of it. <laughs> Went out and had pizza. My cousin Zachary took us, took me out for some um, terrific. Uh, it was Persian food. It's been so long and was so recent, um, and just had an overall great time. Uh, my editor Richard Ashford did an amazing job in uploading both this podcast and the other I do with my brother that I talk about later in this episode as he is on again, but this time as a guest host as you know, recently was Thanksgiving and to kind of honor that we recorded an episode together doing a little earlier than last time where last season we ended with me being interviewed. We're going to do it in the middle of the season a little bit early, I guess rather than the middle, but, uh, Wanted to spend some time with my brother, and what better a way than to, you know, do a podcast together again. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this interview of me on my podcast. Um, my brother is an amazing writer, uh, and we do another podcast together that we talk about later, but we'll talk about it now, uh, Super Pros Bros. So if you like our kind of chemistry here and have time for another podcast, feel free to check us out at super pros bros on youtube soundcloud and spotify but uh yeah enjoy me (laughs) dealing and answering my own questions and uh thanks for spending time with us i hope you enjoy now let's get to it hello everyone i'm going to be our guest host today my name is eli you've actually heard me if you listen to i believe the first episode of this podcast uh it's the third third God damn it. Coming or, back strong. Early. <laughs> early on. Early. One of the, one of the early, very first guys. monster, you made me third. I'm here today mm. with this scumbag of a person I shared a living space with, also known as my brother. How's it going, Isaac? Hey, hey, hey. It's, it's going okay. Making me fucking third. Oh my God. Might have actually been fourth. Hold on. I, now I'm curious. Oh, you animal. Oh <laughs> Dude, my. Dude, I reached out to you early on in this and you're like... Like, maybe next week. <laughs> like, it wasn't like I tried to, like, put you earlier, I think, but... Let's, listen, that's not how I remember it. My head cannon is law. <laughs> You're a monster. This is forever now. Uh... You are immortalized as a douchebag on the internet. <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> um... Now I'm curious, where were you? I swear to God, if you say fifth or sixth, I'm driving fourth. to California. Okay. <laughs> no, Coco was fifth. Okay. Yeah, you were you were fourth. Murphy was before you. That's how slow oh. you were to respond. Ugh. That's on you. Nope, still blaming you. Anyway. <laughs> But at least I now have the opportunity to dump your fucking bitch ass into the hot seat. So, <laughs> well, let me sit. Let me get my bitch ass rumpus. Just all all right. It's nice all, and comfortable. All, all cozy and happy. All right. Hit me. All right. What is uh, your favorite movie line that you like to quote completely apropos of nothing? Chicken isn't vegan. <laughs> vegan and boys uh, <laughs> gelato isn't vegan milk and eggs bitch there you go that's my that's my runner up is, is milk and eggs bitch, bitch. 
<laughs> the amount of times that I've said that to friends when making a recipe when it's in there is... <laughs> There's a lot of people that have heard that one. Do you point finger guns at him while you say it, though? <laughs> Pew! Uh, for those of you that don't know, that is from the Edgar Wright classic, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Highly recommend. I quote that movie, like, it is very a lot. Cool. Yeah. Bread makes you fat? Is <laughs> the third... <laughs> I I have seen um, my wife pull a a Walter a couple times or fall asleep phone in hand like sending a text message (laughs) I've taken pictures just to rub her face at it Um, do you remember your first first date movie yeah it was a great movie choice and a tragic date (laughs) Uh, drove was living in Bernie Falls. I was like God. nineteen. I, remember, I was a, I remember a late this place. bloomer. Yeah, this is a rat hole of a city with beautiful accoutrement and uh, great scenery. And... Awful place. Yeah the the world has been unkind to that to the people in that town. Um, it's the world's ashtray. Everyone it, smokes. Yeah, that is a more apt description than it should be. <laughs> uh, there was a. I worked at the casino. There was my first ever job at the. Um, Bernie Falls Casino, if you want to call it that. It was in a barn, uh, literally. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, just looking at that place is like magnificent and too much irony. Uh, dating a security guard there. Can't remember her name. She's a, quite a bit older than I think she was like 26 when I was 19. But she was cool and fun. Um, I think we both kind of mutually disliked the town and that brought us together, which doesn't <laughs> make for a good relationship. Co- communal but it makes- misery. Yeah, excellent misery. Yeah, it's a great start. Uh, didn't know that much about each other. Tropic Thunder had just been released. And I was like, oh, that looks really fun. She's like, sure. I didn't ask what kind of movie she was into. So then we drove over an hour to Redding, California, a bigger ashtray. It's claimed to Redding, California's claim to, or no, sorry. Yeah, no, Redding, California's claim to fame is the last metropolis of California. Which is kind of like saying the thinnest guy in a in a like Weight Watchers meeting or something like that. You're not impressive. You're just the like you're the small like the biggest. I don't know. It's it's really just a tawdry compliment. But we drove over an hour there to go see in theaters, and I didn't know. And this was a a good uh, you know early breaking point for anything that could be considered a relationship because she didn't like comedies let alone ones of the spastic nature. And for those of you who have seen Tropic Thunder, it is all of those things I just mentioned. So I'm sitting there howling and occasionally checking over on my date because I'm not a complete monster. And she is like, she's giving that look of an aunt who's disappointed in everything about what their, you know, nephew has become. And I'm just like, uh, damn. (laughs) <laughs> but I'm still enjoying the movie or at least I'm trying to and she's just like judging me like arms crossed looking over at me like what is wrong with you and I'm just like oh, this is the funniest shit I've ever seen it was however many hours and minutes of just it's like two hours of discomfort yeah just like hilarious discomfort it was looking back it might be actually that experience might be in retrospect as funny as the film itself <laughs> All right. What is Since I didn't get to ask you this question because the questions have changed and I don't know. Do you Eli, do you remember what your first first date movie was? Hell no, I don't. I don't remember Damn. that I I know that I I I did not date many people. Like mm-hmm. I think I went on I think I've been on a total of two or three dates with people that are not my wife. Like <laughs> hopefully all before your wife. Yeah, all, 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 all prior, all prior. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Um <laughs> But, yeah, like, th- that was it. Like, I think I went on a date with a girl once, and then she proceeded to ghost me for a summer, which was very awkward. <laughs> yeah, which also, we grew up in a town of, like, 15,000. She was, still, so in the fuck- she was there. still in fucking band. I saw her when school started. <laughs> I was just oh, like, what amazing. the fuck? Yeah, you're texting her and she's just like not responding, and you just look across the classroom. And she's just it's sitting like, there. What the shit, Taylor? Um, <gasps> oh and then, my like, God, in like amazing. fifth grade, 
when it was like that really awkward, like, do I like girls? How does this work? Kind of thing. <laughs> like, and then, yeah, then it's like, but Artemis said I haven't dated anyone that isn't Artemis. So, we. <laughs> so I, I really don't remember. Like, I remember going and seeing, seeing movies together. Like, mm. I just do, do, I don't remember what was first. <laughs> no, no, no <laughs> shot. I've been hit too many times in the head. That is, that is long gone. <laughs> Uh, also, it would have been that movie theater in Fallon, which was just worth forgetting. Um, it's interesting that you say that because I was having a conversation with uh, Colton about that recently. And like there's a new like they've gotten a better theater now, eh. apparently. But it's like my memories of that place. I'm glad I we have no reason to go back anymore because my memories of that place are very fond because it's like I saw so many movies there. Yeah, and they were all, like, you know, as pivotal moments in childhood. And sure. so I don't really. It's been long enough that I forget what how shitty I'm sure it was. Oh, it's not good. Yeah, but it, I don't remember that. It's kind of like the Chinese food next to uh, the magic shop we used to go to. I remember it like it was amazing. I'm sure it was dog shit. It, but it, it was actually it was okay. Because <laughs> I've been. There I remember I'm, it being I, like Star Spangled Amazing. I mean, though, I, like, it, so. it's not. It's not. Yeah, it's exactly. not fucking. <laughs> It's not hot shit in a champagne glass, but it's not cold diarrhea <laughs> in a Dixie cup either. Um, nice, thank you. Like it's it's like it's like a seven, seven and a half. It's yeah. it's fine. It's serviceable, but it's not like not worth drooling over. Not worth going out of your way for. But it's respectable. Like it's that's mm-hmm. my honest take on on the walk. Um, yeah. Anyway, speaking of food, what's uh, your favorite meal to make for yourself? Just assuming that time and cost aren't super relevant factors. So there's this um, YouTube channel that I love and recommend everybody else following. It's called Binging with Babish. I'm yep. sure you've heard it at this point. The guy is a national ce- He's like one of the YouTube national celebrities that of just a purely beautiful nature in the United States, as far as I can tell. Uh, and he did this episode on, it's called The World's Greatest Sandwich. I will do my best to remember to put it in the show notes. And I think it's from Spanglish and it's just a BLT with like a poached egg and maybe another bit of biz on it. I don't remember. And it's fucking amazing. (laughs) It's just like you got two pieces of sourdough, you know, BLT egg. Mm. And like, I want to say there's one more thing on it, but I can't remember. And it's just awesome. It, It takes a little bit of time to make because, you know, Egg plus sandwich plus the accoutrement doing it in the right order. But watching the video twice to make sure you're doing it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it, it takes a little bit, but man, oh my gosh. It, it gets you good. ready for a nap real quick. <laughs> it's, the, it's the right amount of calorie and, uh, you know, just caloric intake. Just like... Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's it's so it's so delightful. What, what about yeah. you? What's what's uh, your... You, you are far more a chef, so you probably have a better answer. No, I'm not. Um... You make steaks, motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, know, I, know, I don't. I know how to cook meat. That's sort of it. Like, <laughs> okay. Like the, I, I will say that I do like making curry. Like there is, I've there gotten go. decent at it. I, I say decent. I will not say good. I, I refuse. Someone, <laughs> someone will find me and be like, "Fuck you." Um, <laughs> but I feel like I've gotten to the point where I'm getting decent at it, and like I've learned little, little kind of tricks. Like you can, like I've used chicken mostly as like a, a kind of protein. <laughs> And you'll just like I was cook I it. was hoping that you were like I now use chicken instead of not any meat. <laughs> like uh, something yeah. like that. It's like it's mind blowing how much meat adds to a dish. Yeah, but like cooking it in like a, you know used to cook it like on the side. It's like no fuck that shit. Just throw it straight in and like mm. it just kind of assimilates the fat. Um, and <laughs> it cooks in like a bunch of flavor. It's really just, like your chicken won't dry out. Things like that. Like I've mm. and I've gotten better about. Not not overcooking things like potatoes; they just start to turn to fucking mush. Like, yeah, but they're still delicious. <laughs> yeah, but like, and then it starts to fuck with your consistency. Like, no, nah. like it, it's it's got it's one of those things I've just gotten better at doing. Mm. Um, and I like I like cooking curry. Like, it, it's one of those things that you can cook and mass. It's, it's like cool. I have lunch for the next two days at work, kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like. I haven't gotten to grill in years, but I do like grilling. Grilling is fun. Steak is fun because my because <laughs> dad made me make steak a lot. Very odd, but <laughs> he was just lazy. He just didn't want. He really was. <laughs> really was a fucker. But like, I'm getting free food out of it, so it's like, yeah, okay. 
Um, <laughs> I'll I'll take this. Um, <laughs> uh, so the best you... part is we know he's listening to this. Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. yeah, we know, Dad. <laughs> we know. Um, we also know that you're going to forget by the time we come home for Christmas. We're forget by the time he finishes the end of this. Um, <laughs> speaking of uh, forgetting, what is mm. your favorite non-exercise thing that you have to force yourself to do? Uh, writing. Not even close. All right. <laughs> I, I, I love when I get in the middle of it, when I get to like a good piece that I'm doing, when I'm done with it, I feel very... I feel very good about myself, mm-hmm. but yeah, that's effort. Like getting to it. Oh my god, yeah, it's, it's, I, it's effort. I would rather do my taxes by hand in a different language. Like it I is. I feel like that can't be true. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel like that might be a, a step too far. <laughs> like it is. Oh, I, I think part of it is that like just sitting down and getting to the activity. That part of it is like. It is, you know, that, like, what do I write first? Like, if you haven't, like, kind of left yourself something to do, you Mm -hmm. know, you're not on, like, halfway through a page where you know what's next. The other half is, like, I'm so pessimistic that I'm just, like, it's not going to amount to anything. Why am I doing this? And so it's so hard to push past that worthless feeling of uh, futility. Breaching to the choir. (laughs) How do you get past that as someone who's done it more than myself? Uh, <laughs> that's, tell- that's telling, <laughs> isn't it? Um, I mean, there's one thing. There's there's some things to be said for just like uh, I'm not gonna say lie to yourself till it start till you start to believe it, but to a degree, like there there's something that like is is a good habit, and people do it for like uh, notably body dysmorphia. This is a, mm. a very common practice. So you look at the mirror, and you basically just give yourself positive affirmations, regardless of what you see. Like for people with like um, body dysmorphia, you'll, you'll do it usually naked. And you'll point out physical things about yourself that you like that are good, not bad. Even if even not. if you can't, even if you don't believe it, or do you have to? Like, no, no, you have to, to, you have to find good. five things. You're like, these are fine. These are good. I accept these. These are these are good. We'll, we'll take these. You know. This is the smallest mole on my body. Yeah, yeah. We'll this take, hair we'll take, isn't discolored. We'll take whatever <laughs> W you can fucking find. My teeth aren't terrible. Yeah. You know, like yeah. my nose isn't broken. My my eyes are the right <laughs> distance apart. Like whatever the fuck. Like no matter how small or bizarre, yeah. but you can kind of do the same thing, um, in terms of like uh, bits of character about yourself. Because mm. like there's always facets of yourself that you can you can look at and and respect and and like. And it's so much easier to write if you are not constantly undermining yourself, being like, I'm terrible, I'm garbage, mm-hmm. this is going to be worthless. It's like, you don't, have to, you don't have to start with that narrative. It doesn't make it necessarily, it doesn't mean that voiceover goes away, I guess, but you can, mm-hmm. you can start in an easier spot to kind of push back against it be like, no, no, it, it might. We don't know that for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't, because it's one of those like super philosophies aren't ever the answer so like don't you don't have to play with them hmm. i'm still on that <laughs> that is after this podcast is over i'm printing out like four pieces of paper in bold print with like four things that people have said nice about my writing and just putting it right above my computer <laughs> yeah i mean honestly I'm I'm laughing, saying it like it's a joke. That's a hundred percent what's happening. I believe this it. Podcast is I mean, over. Just, like that. I I for a while I carried a thing around in my wallet. It was like, what do I want like, my writing to look like? And so I'd, I'd usually notice it. It's like an old scrap of paper. Like that's awesome. Yeah, that's not the craziest thing I've ever heard. Not by a mile. <laughs> Doing this podcast with my brother. <laughs> 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 Fucker. Um... <laughs> Uh, cause I... Oh, no, I was saying that from your angle, not from my angle. <laughs> <laughs> oi, oi, oi. <laughs> Alright, who is someone you've never met, alive or dead, that you would love to have lunch with? James Baldwin. Why? If you've ever heard, luckily, this man was around, uh, and... It, hold on. Let me make sure that he's 
dead before I go <laughs> talking like he is dead? Because I actually don't know. Wait, Bob, I do still believe, alive, by the way. Um, I do believe he has... Yeah, he died in 1987. Okay, he's been dead for a minute. Um, he is this amazing uh, American writer, and I kind of consider him a poet. He's very much an activist. He was... So, he was definitely... A lesser known at the time but he was very much around and interacting with and you know people were putting mics in his face sure. around the same time as martin luther king and malcolm x and yeah. very much had a like a kind of differing opinion on the thing i think more in line with martin luther king than malcolm x but very much understood where malcolm x was coming from he wasn't like this guy's crazy he's like no <laughs> like no, we get it yeah, yeah yeah he's like how do you expect us to be when all we are is vilified pursued and treated like the enemy yeah. and he wrote and spoke in such it was sad but so beautifully written and his just his spoken word is just it's got this candor and this flavor to it that i can't really express i would highly recommend um oh there's a movie that is about his life is it I, it's called I Am Not Your Negro. Um, I believe it's on... Uh, it looks like it was done on PBS. I don't know where you can watch it, but I would recommend looking for it. I think I watched... I want to say I watched it on either that or something similar to that on um, Amazon. And I think, it was, I think it was narrated by Samuel Jackson. Mm. Um and it is just breathtaking. It, very sad. Yeah. Because, I mean, so much of being an African-American through now still just fucking sucks. I was sucks. Gonna say, you, you can still say that now. I'm watching yeah, that on second hand. It's miserable. Yeah. Not great. Um, and just, he very much kind of took um, said Ben Franklin, like a, a leaf out of Ben Franklin's page, and just like went to, went to Europe at one point because he was just like... Being black here sucks. I'm out. And just kind of like took like a long respite in France and was like, yeah, it's a lot better to be black in France than it is in the United States. Or I think it's somewhere in Europe. And he wrote a lot of his pieces about that. I think he ended up coming back at one point. But he also was gay and wrote about being gay, being black, and being both of those in the time period that he was. And just, just the way he spoke, the honesty and... The word uh, I really like. He is one of the most amazing uh, nonfiction writers. Mm. At least I don't. He might have done fiction. I don't know. But from what I've read and a lot of what I've listened to from him, it's just so poetically, beautifully tragic. No. And it really is. It just it'll make you feel shit. <laughs> don't go in there looking for a good time. <laughs> You're gonna need like a blanket and a rocking chair to kind of like go through it. You definitely yeah. come out feeling being a better person. You might not feel better initially, depending upon like yeah. which you're reading, but it is really powerful. And I would love to just apologize, buy him lunch, and just let him talk to me. Because it doesn't matter what he said to me. The way, even when he's like dispatching a scathing indictment against somebody, it's still coming out like just this beautiful maple syrup. Yeah. It, it moves, but it's got so much weight and temperance and pacing to it viscosity um what it's why maple syrup is thick that's the property of the liquid is it's yeah. very viscous sorry <laughs> you just like to rub that word in my face because i keep using words to, <laughs> in place of that one because i you just not mentioned maple well syrup and i fucking heard it said exactly about maple syrup the other day uh, in a video uh, that's all for background for better part of four years i would use the word loquacious much to my uh brother's dismay <laughs> as a stand-in for what i later learned via him <laughs> was the word viscosity when it comes to describing yeah. the liquid like state of a uh, you know certain type of yeah, matter loquacious is like word no, it's like verbose it, i think it i think it has to do with like kind of like it, it it's very much akin to what paul uh, uh, it's the best adjective for a politician is being loquacious. Loquacious, uh, yeah, no, I was totally right. It's yeah. it's long winded and wordy. Yeah, but I think it also has to do with like 
kind of lying through your teeth. Not necessarily, just tending to talk a great deal. Yeah. What's the second definition to it, though? Or, like, one of the other... has to do with, like, being not trustworthy or having... There's some uh, flimsiness with the truth, I believe. Am I, am I completely off base? I, I do not see that being much attributed to it. Okay. Wrong again. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> However, it does almost always hold a negative connotation. There we go. That's but it is I, not, there's something it is that not inherently I, or intrinsically negative. Yeah. I think when I looked it up, it was like <laughs> like the underneath of like CX, it was like C politician or something like that. <laughs> I like that's how I remember it. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But it, like that's like the 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 connective tissue is loquacious is to like politician. All right. But speaking of of wordy, what yes. is your favorite non traditional curse word? I was about to actually just use it. Just gadzooks. <laughs> I think I I I have a three way tie, but I think that's gonna be my choice just because it's so you can use it in so many circumstances, and it's just got. A, it's just got such good like flavor but the the other choices were it was between gadzooks great googly moogly but that that one is just such a mouthful and <laughs> it's wonderful though if using towards a person i think the one as like a put down is stooge <laughs> just because you can hear the you know uh oh what's the word i'm looking for not put down. There's a better word for that. You can hear the like disparagement of someone's character. It's, just it's a very good in condescension. The phonics, just in the font, just such a stooge. Th- like just those. That sound is just like that's yeah. a that does not mean good things. Like even if you don't know English, you're like he doesn't like you. He thinks you're a piece of shit. <laughs> like that. Like you can just hear yeah, it. Yeah. It's like a, that's my favorite thing is when words sound like you can hear. Well, you can just hear the connotation or the general, like, um, sphere in which they are directed mm-hmm. just in the phonic. Yeah. You know, like, stooge is negative. Um, blissful is just clearly happy. Oh, that's so blissful. It's like, yeah, that means a good thing. Like, you, I mean, you can go out of your way to say the words in a way in a different ways yeah, yeah, yeah. like you can be like oh stooge or blissful but like you're working but like to do that but to like the way they are normally pronounced like to have them designate i think that's one of the things i like and enjoy about certain english words is when they designate their kind of direction and their position yeah and gadzooks did differently <laughs> like, like it's hard to not put an accidental exclamation part at the end of gadzooks yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> The Z O K S sound is just like always going to like accidentally have like an exclamation point at the end. Of it. Like I think if you type it into Google Docs, it'll accidentally do it for you. <laughs> Try it out. See if I'm right. It just auto ends exclamation. Point. <laughs> yeah, just like press enter. It's like boop. It's like we know this is what you meant. It's like capitalizing an I. Like if yeah. you do I and then press space, it auto capitalizes yeah. it. You just write Gadzooks like, we, we and press know. space. It's like We're exclamation here for you, buddy. Point. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. You forgot something. <laughs> what about you as someone with a great long list of silly uh, words i do i do often find myself i default a lot to profanity if i don't just insult people um although if i if i really want to insult people i start going very clean yeah um, i think that's how i notice if you hate somebody the most is when it's long-winded and there isn't a curse word in sight yeah like you maybe get one but like if I'm just greeting my friend, I'll just be like, how's it going, you fucking cunt? Um, like, that is that is how I picked up Colton from the airport, for the record. <laughs> just, like, gave him a giant hug and said that. Like, pretty loud. Like, it wasn't subtle. Um, <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I do like people... I do like calling people a monkey. Like, oh my gosh, you, you fucking moronic monkey. Like, that's... <laughs> Um, I'm gonna. There, there's a response to that that I'm holding back for the record. Don't, don't. I know where you're taking this, and don't you do it. Don't you do it, <laughs> motherfucker. Um. Uh, I think the reason that you might do it, though, like where you go long-winded, and yeah, it's it, mostly clean, is so that is because you I generally just, this, this cannot be misconstrued. You will not censor me. You will hear this. Not only that, but, like, so much of 
speak around our parents, they would give us a hard time for profanity. Yeah. And so I think part of that, like, censorship and worry of, like, you know, like you want to express yourself and you don't want to have any reason for somebody to go well now like you just yeah. want to be able to like I, have that stand I, I also, unencumbered i do i do also liken people to inanimate objects that is probably <laughs> that the, is the best that is the that is one of the best one ways. i do yeah if, if i'm not trying to be like unnecessarily insulting and just going yeah. off just 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 going off like but i will just liken people especially if i'm playing league people are being dumb i'm like i have boots that are smarter than you like <laughs> man is about as smart as my necktie like shit like that <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll man is about just, as smart as my necktie i'll, I'll throw so stuff good. off the cuff i do like likening people to shoes that is a that yeah. is a favorite that's great that or a potato like this man is a, <laughs> this man is a potato um i feel sorry the potato is such a great vegetable it has done so it's, much it's, positive and we liken it to being the stupidest thing on the planet Earth. it goes to the so fucking funny. ground isaac I know, but so do a lot of other carrots, things. But you know. yeah, there's there's things that grow in the ground, and like p- the potato, like literally saved a country. Is, man, it's called a tuber. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it it it's got enough Fair cred. Enough. It's got enough cred. It can take one L. All right. It saved, <laughs> it saved Matt Damon. It could take an L. <laughs> Save Matt Damon, the Irish. You know? <laughs> Who fucking cares about them? No, I'm just kidding. Um, Irish great people. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing against you, Ireland. Um, but but speaking of speaking of inanimate objects, uh, mm. what nice would you be friends with if if and be it were sentient? A la Beauty and the Beast. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's funny you say that. I am literally holding a coffee cup, and I start my day Ship. basically every day. Yeah. Well, I haven't broken this one just yet. Uh, but yeah, I would, I think I would, I also love this coffee cup. Granted, I have four like so, it, so, so I would do, have like, does Chip four have like ones, a but... massive concussion or something? <laughs> have you seen that? There's a comic that somebody did like, oh, they come back to life and Chip's just got like this, like, <laughs> just got like a cleft palate or something. No, no, no. He's just got like a head wound <laughs> because it's in the top of like where his mouth is situated. It looks like he just got like sundered to the noggin. Just, just like somebody just took gump. like an ax. <laughs> it's just like, ah! <laughs> I don't remember who did it. I'll see if I could find it but it's so tremendous excellent okay what, what about you what's your is this actually your coffee cup yeah mine's 100 percent my 100% coffee cup. i'm coffee holding cup. it right now drinking my coffee cup and just enjoying enjoying it um i feel like my chair would hate me <laughs> why are you always farting on me like She's like fucking sit still, asshole. Like, um, <laughs> I, I do feel like I'd be good friends with my like little fidget cube, though. Him and, him and I'd probably get along. I worry he'd be too much nervous energy, but he'd probably be chill. Uh, I'll put it in the show notes because I found it, or I'll try to put it in the show notes. I just sent it to you, Eli. You can see what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> is, is that my brain? <laughs> oh uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, this is a chunk. Like a bite out of like a bite of a ham sandwich. <laughs> All right. It's like somebody took a bite out of it. <laughs> All right. Do you have a life hack that you would like to share with the class? I do indeed. What this isn't I. It it only works for those of you with the similar disposition as myself, who are also coffee drinkers and specifically drink pour over as opposed to going and getting it from a local you know shop or having like a Mister Coffee Machine that brews it for you. Yeah. So I just learned this recently, and it's. Very small, but it does change things. So it's, this isn't a time hack as much as it is a value hack. When doing a pour over, before you put coffee into the filter, run water through the filter and it takes, uh, it removes, and sadly, for some of you, you might be so used to it. <clears throat> Dad, <clears throat> mom. Uh, but I would recommend trying it out. 
and just run water through the filter, then put the coffee grounds in and then pour the water. If you want to get extra fancy, pour the water in like little bouts so it gets more of the flavor in. But, you know, some people got stuff to do and they just got to shove all the water in there, let it drain while they fuss around with their other daily activities. But pouring water through the filter before you put coffee and then pour water through it really obviously pour water through it, throw out the water because that's just, you know, filter water. You don't need that in the cup, but it takes the paper flavoring out of the circumstance. And I've no, I've noticed a difference between mm. so I started doing it with this uh with when using the same kind of coffee ground and I noticed that I enjoyed the coffee better after I started doing it. I was like, oh, I do like this coffee <laughs> before I was kind of mixed on it. And then I was like, oh no, the coffee's good. So I didn't like the I filter like the taste flavor. Of paper. Who knew? Yes. Surprisingly enough, I did not like the taste of paper. Uh, that that one it hasn't been a, a much of a time save, although it isn't I mean it doesn't take but like seconds. Um, you know, just like put it under a faucet, yeah. you know, run it around, throw out the water, and then easy peasy, and easy. But if you were a condiment, what would you be? I think I know Boyer your pin... answer. Oh, okay, what do you think it's gonna be? I think it's gonna be ranch dressing. That's probably accurate. However, the way I view myself is Larapin mustard. Okay. And here's why I've, I've put way too much thought into this <laughs> silly, <laughs> silly question. All right. Hit, hit me with it. So Larapin mustard, as far as I know, is only made at a restaurant in Humboldt County. Okay. Uh, fantastic restaurant. Sadly, I never went to it when I was up there. I didn't have that kind of money. It's a decently upscale restaurant. Gotcha. Um, but they make their own mustard that you can buy in the local stores up there. And I would highly recommend it, it is delicious. However, it is a very particular kind of mustard, so I would say it's a relatively acquired taste. Ah, uh, okay. And also, it's from a certain area. It likes to think of itself as upscale when it really isn't. So there's all these, like, connotative things for me that I'm just like, yeah, that's kind of me. I think I'm cooler than I am. I like to, I'm, you know, I'm do this and that. Line here. Yeah, you're, you're picking up what I'm putting down? I am. In all reality, I probably am ranch dressing. Like, to most people, I'm probably not Larapin mustard. I think to myself, I'm Larapin mustard. To most people, I'm probably just ranch dressing. dressing. That being said, I love both of them. They're both, in my opinion, amazing. But, yeah. I'm going to stick with Larapin mustard. It sounds more... Uh, more fancy. Upscale, yeah. Fancy. Yeah, it, gives, it gives you more character. Indeed. What about yourself? I'm, I'm uh, curious. A thousand percent of ranch dressing. <laughs> I'm not gonna try and pretend I'm something I'm not. Why do you think that's well a compliment? Or... I mean, do you listen, think that's a compliment or a listen, degradation? Listen, right, every white person on the fucking planet puts ranch in everything. If that isn't at least they should. If that isn't an endorsement of a utility, I don't know what the fuck is. <laughs> I'm ta- I'm, listen, I'm putting that in the W column. <laughs> it's a big dub. And li- listen, I mean. <laughs> All right, <laughs> gotta do this. You know what ranch goes great with? Barbecue sauce. It sounds sacrilegious. No, it's, it's wonderful. Shit. Yeah, I'm white as fuck. I'm married to a brown woman. Listen, if the boot fits. <laughs> <laughs> wow, did not see that coming. God, God. Jeez. There you go. There you Ooh. go. Firing from the fucking hip. Um, <laughs> She's sweet and you're basic as hell. Got yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> Someone's got to be worldly in this fucking cup. Like, sure, fuck ain't me. Uh, sure, says the man who's traveled to Japan and speaks the language Bruh, to some extent. Bro, I've got African masks on my walls. Those sure as fuck didn't come from me. Um, <laughs> they're dope. But they are dope. There's a lot of cool shit on my walls, actually. <laughs> Place is class. I don't know if class, but definitely character. Um, all right, what is the job at some point in your life that you wanted to pursue, but are glad you didn't get? Uh, you're gonna laugh your ass off of this one. Hit me with well, okay, first off, what do you think it is? Because you've known me for as long as anybody, basically. Uh, I'm trying to think what you would like grown up wanting to do. I'm, I honestly, this would be a fun question to ask mom and dad because I have no idea like what I wanted to be when I was like little, uh, little. I I don't really remember. Something would be like fucking poker player or some shit. 
That was later. That was later. I'm also glad I didn't get that one, although I think it would have been at least interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's probably the right, like, the more real answer. My answer that I have written down is Navy SEAL. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> at one point, I thought of myself, clearly. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> what? No, really? Yeah. Oh, I gotta stop my voice going up. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna go full fucking Mickey over here. Jesus. So at one point, I was, for like a year or two, I was in like the ROTC in our high school Damn. and was definitely like thought of myself in like good shape. And I wasn't like in bad shape, but I definitely wasn't cut. I was like, I mean, okay high school i could not have like made varsity in any sport even in our small town yeah uh and really like kind of like yeah i'm gonna do this and then like after two years in rotc and just like the difference in the way somewhere between we were raised and the way like i just my mental mindset was is like oh this isn't for me and also i don't like working out that much <laughs> <laughs> and then talking to people who are way better shape than i ever could have been or will be and they're like yeah i didn't even, couldn't even come close it's like okay Glad I didn't try that because that would have been like a really crestfallen moment. Yeah. And also I would have just like put myself down a path that I think I am in every single way unfit for. So it would just been a colossal mistake. Mm. I think poker player is probably the one that comes second, mm. partially because of the circumstance you surround yourself in. And also with the way the game has evolved since yeah. I got interested in it. Cause when I was interested in poker, I was like 19 and yep. so 19, that would have been 16 years ago. That would have been like 2006. The difference, the game, how the game has evolved in those 16 years, and maybe I would have evolved with it, I don't know. But it has changed so much from being this game of like outfoxing each other. And it was a lot more nuanced and personable. And then over the years, an online poker and a bunch of mathematicians getting involved, it became a button clicking thing where people mathed it out. And even the best of players that could, like, really read people and knew people were just, like, people figured out math to an extent where it's, like, they couldn't show their hand, but they basically could, and they couldn't be beat. Like, it's, like, people basically computering up. Yeah. And it's just, like, it lost all of its allure, its interest, and its beauty to me. It's just kind of, it's cool in, like, a very academic sense, mm -hmm. but in a personable and artistic way it just like fell off the side of the planet it's yeah. just like oh it's just you know it's math class with you know sure. different looking objects sure, and sure, it, sure. it kind of you know lost its allure but it, yeah either of those navy seal is definitely the more ridiculous well, one it but... absolutely is <laughs> all right if you're going out to a party and you want to look a bit extra what is the the accessory you grab for the ensemble I basically only have one accessory to my name. I have a hat. lot of them. Yeah, it's yeah, a hat. Okay. <laughs> For those of you that aren't aware... Motherfucker I likes hats. Motherfucker likes hats. Uh, I think at this moment, I've got around 50 hats. That's a lot of hats. It's a lot of hats. It might be actually 60. It's a lot. Um, And they are specifically from two genre sets, basically. It's either from this company, uh, Tokidoki, which loved death. Um, very cute characters. They've done a lot of Marvel. They've done a lot of other. Um, very chibi inspired. Yeah. And it's just a lot of fun. I like their fitted ones a lot, although the size differential drives me nuts. Um, just so you guys know the plight that is the hat wearer of this company. Very small group of us. Uh, they do not... They'll have ones labeled seven and five eighths for sizing and ones that are labeled seven and seven eighths. And while I'm sure in the factory they were correctly, you know, measured to fit because it is a exact centimeter measurement uh -huh. in, I don't know if it's storage and shipping or whatever. I have ones that are seven and seven eighths and seven and five eighths. And the one that is seven and five eighths fits nicely. And the one that's seven and seven eighths feels like it's going to squeeze my brain out of my head. And for the life of me, I cannot figure out why. Yeah. But the, the sizing is not... Not consistent. Very, it's not consistent across the board, in my experience, I should say. Yeah. 
Um, anyway, so there's that company. Both of these are done by Newer, which I think is by far the best hat company. Probably the biggest hat company by a mile. Uh, mm-hmm. The other one is if you look at baseball teams, like Major League Baseball teams, they usually have a feeder team that is, it's like a, I want to say it's like double A or maybe triple A baseball that is kind of like, You'll see them. They're very localized for like small towns and stuff like that. Not small towns, but like mid-sized towns. And they have like a field. I don't know how much the players get paid, but it's something. But probably it's definitely nowhere near, you know, like retirement money. But it is like it's a living, I believe. Either which way. They have teams and they have mascots. And since they don't have to be put on television, holy crap. They get really creative and really fun with them. Mm -hmm. And so you'll have like the Lansing Locos Lugnuts, which they're for whatever reason. When you think Locos Lugnuts, you don't think of a owl high on mescaline, but that's their (laughs) like if you look them up, one of their hats is this like owl that looks like he's just come off a bender and they like they took his mug shot. It is amazing. And I have started collecting those hats from specifically like the lower level teams and they are just the, they're just so much fun. So those are the two ones that I've kind of gone ham and bought and just for, I sadly, this might make me seem like a poser, but I buy them just because of the art Uh uh, on the cap, but it's, oh my gosh, they're so much fun. Yeah. What is a, what is a life lesson that you wish you'd learned sooner? Coming from one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Sucking at something is the first step towards being good at something. For me, I have been blessed and cursed with being relatively great off the jump at a lot of things. So getting better than I start at something is really hard for me. Because I just, that hasn't been a thing a problem for me which sounds great and it is when you pick up something like if i pick up something next to somebody else generally speaking unless it's their field or it's so far away from my field i usually start off better than a lot of people at stuff not trying to brag that's just been my experience Hmm. or at least the experience that are the experiences that i remember and so i usually pick up stuff really fast but then from that point forward i usually don't get too much better at a lot of stuff or not that I notice. Mm. And a lot of people, they suck at something and they go, okay, well, I want to be good at this. And so they power through that really isn't the experience for me, which has stifled a lot of growth in a lot of areas for me. Yeah. Like I've gotten, I've (laughs) slight like spoiler alert. uh, My passion is magic. And I started pretty decently at magic my first uh big tournament i finished i made it to the elimination rounds i like started from the upper middle and but i really haven't progressed too much past there i've gotten better just inherently but i haven't studied i haven't put in the work and i think that definitely is like my biggest thing that i wish Mm. And I'm still like, this is a life lesson that I am learning still. There's a poster on my wall from Adventure Time of Jake saying this to Finn, which is like my favorite bro couple of all time. And it really is just the truth. It's like, you gotta just, you know, you start from the bottom and work your way up. Yeah. Sometimes the bottom is higher than you, th- than, you know, it is for other people, but it's the pushing through that you need to do. And it's one of the life lessons that I missed and I'm, you know, I'm 35 and I'm trying to figure it out now. And it's not the most fun thing ever at 35, trying to figure out the most, probably the most fundamental basic and helpful skill. I think yeah. at least for me of just being like, all right, well, I suck at it. How do I get better? And just, you know, accepting being crap. Mom, mom, God bless her. Tried to teach me this and I just rejected it so hard. There, I was taking an AP math class in um, sophomore year. Uh-huh. So I, I took to math like a cat takes to milk. Uh, and I was so good at it up until that point. And I couldn't get it because I hadn't had to learn math. I just got math. Uh-huh. So I never really learned how to learn, <clears throat> Yeah, which is a problem even now. 
Uh, and so I went in and I was like, I don't want to, I'm just going to do bad on this AP test. There's no point in taking it. She's like, you need to learn how to fail and didn't get it then. In fact, it honestly, I think she was right to make me do it, but my takeaway wasn't, oh, I've got to get better. It's like, oh, I don't want to do things that I suck at. And so instead of progressing as a student, I regressed. And like the next class I took was like beginning to accounting with uh, our favorite math teacher, Mr. Tapier. <laughs> That old kooky son bitch, uh, and just like I was taking math with people that I knew more about, and I'm not saying this to be mean, but I knew more about math than than they ever were going to. This was people that were, they were going to need this to make sure that they had rent money moving forward. These were people that were sadly a lot of them were probably destined to have the last year of high school be the last learning experience academically of their life. And so learning this was going to be fundamental to them, you know, being able to pay rent, maybe buying a house, yeah. you know, having enough money for a car. And so it was a really important class. And I did learn some things. There, there were things that I took away from that class, most of which were this guy's crazy and kind of fun. Um, but that was very much my instead of my tactic of like moving up and, it, it, you know, accepting the challenge moving forward, I, I moved down. And so didn't learn that lesson till now, even if I'm not even sure I learned it yet. But Still working on it. Yeah. yeah. Chipping away at that block. Um, But what is, what is speaking of still now, what is a good poor man luxury that you still enjoy? Uh, it's another tie. It's between Kraft Mac and Cheese or Pigs in a Blanket. And I don't, okay. I really don't know which. Pro I guess Pigs in a Blanket's more of a luxury than Kraft Mac and Cheese is. So probably go with Pigs in a Blanket. Okay. But boy, boy, howdy, those are both just like... Yeah, no, I get it. 100%. I think I could do both of those right now. <laughs> 100%. I agree. On board. I might have to walk safely to buy some mac and cheese. You fucking yeah. monster. Um, <laughs> um, speaking of things to do right now, what is a, a kind of show, movie, graphic novel, etc. that's next on the list that you have yet to, to really get into? Yet another tie. <laughs> All right. Because I'm good at making decisions, apparently. Because we, we can narrow things down, apparently. Yeah. All right. All right. So what, so one of them is a book I need to finish, which is The Lies of Locke Lamora. Um, I'm exactly halfway through the book. And for whatever reason, months ago, I set it down. And my okay. I was reading the book with a friend and we were trying to keep each other like engaged in it. And yeah. we both sadly set the book down at about the same time <laughs> and have both not picked it back up again. Uh, so that one needs to get finished because it was a good book and I was enjoying it. And yeah. for whatever reason, I set it down. Um, I'm hoping to dive in and uh, spend the time necessary to watch Dark on Netflix, which I've only heard like amazing things about yeah. so that one and then uh much to my interview interviewers uh annoyance i have yet to start the expanse and i know that is a book series that i need to at least give a try to if not watch on amazon so we can talk about it more it is exquisite <laughs> yeah i have the first book bought it it's just sitting in a box i just need to finish lies and then find time to read again. But that's definitely one of those ones that I really want to get into. I've only heard from you and the whole world that it is just an amazing franchise worth my time. It really is. It's probably the best like science fiction series I've ever read. Wow. That's, that's really fucking good. Right. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> but I mean, you've read a lot. Like it's, that's not coming. Like if I, I've read some, so if I said that about any book, it's like, yeah, maybe. Like, to, I think to, I said to something. To be fair, I haven't read a ton of science fiction. I've read a lot of fantasy. Okay. All right. But, fair. But yeah. You've read a lot, though. So to say it is good. Yep. It's, like, we, it's very How good. would you compare it to the rest of the things you've read, I guess? If you want to quantify it more. Like, is it in the top echelon of oh, stuff you've read, period? Like, yeah, yeah okay. for sure. I mean, that that is that is saying a lot. Like, it... Yeah, it's... It, it's probably in like my top five series i've ever read wow like it's probably like worm that being number one worm or mistborn is probably number one mm. i feel like worm's got a few odd points that bug me 
Like Mistborn's ending is fucking stupid. <laughs> Every, everything and every. Can I guess who wrote Mistborn? You absolutely can. <laughs> I, I love Sanderson. I love Brandon Sanderson's writing. He's such a he's such a good writer. He occasionally does like the Tolkien thing and like prattles gets... on too long about like yeah. description. I'm like I don't fucking care. We're not coming back here. Uh, <laughs> but like his world building is exceptional. His storytelling is exceptional. Till he learns he has to stop. And then he's just like, <laughs> oh fuck. And like, then, he, then he channels his he, inner he channels, uh, Escaflone. He channels just his like, fucking inner studio trigger and just does some bizarre jumping of this shark. It's like, well, how did we get here? <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> before we before we chuck into a commercial break, if you could have these listeners hear one song of your choosing, what are you picking? Uh, I. I'm a huge sucker for whistling. One of my favorite uh, movies growing up was the animated feature uh, Robin Hood by Disney. Mm-hmm. Um, <whistles> hey. Yeah, I, I know where you're going with that. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, for some reason, I didn't think you could whistle. So nice. what? Right. I don't know why I thought that. I just what? definitely did. I, I don't know. I can, I can whistle... Almost infinitely from my mouth, if, like, I just, like, keep my mouth wet, because I can whistle on inhale and exhale. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, it was, snapping. Uh, it was snapping that took really long for me to figure oh, out. Oh, okay. I, I sat... Snapping and growing a beard. I sat That's in good. a room for, like, two hours just staring at my hands trying to figure out how snaps worked. I finally <laughs> did it. I was so angry that you and Dad could snap and constantly flaunted it. So I was just like, I will learn this, like, through sheer force of will. Uh, so, talking about whistling... Uh, one of my, f- I love the artist Andrew Bird. Mm-hmm. He's very whimsical, very light, light sounding but heavy meaning. Um, there is a great song of his called Sisyphus okay. that has a fantastic, fantastic uh, whistling element to it, and I just love it to death. Okay. Um, it was featured in the Bear. It's a great show that I watched this last year. Knew it from well before then. I can I can pick out that I've picked out that whistle. Back when I was working at the Bicycle Casino, we, at one point, were, our break room was down a hallway from the clamor that is a casino. And mm-hmm. as I'm walking down through all the hullabaloo, in the uh, break room, somebody was playing, annoyingly enough, but wisely enough, playing the song on their phone without headphones, which, huge pet peeve. Um, we're not there yet. Not the also not going to be the my preposterous one because that one's just real. If you you should not like don't, that's don't be that guy. That's a hanging offense in my opinion. No, just just don't be that buy guy. Buy headphones. Don't be a piece of shit. Um, and it's also like when you're playing it for a friend, fine. But like they're just playing it for themselves. Like go fuck yourself. If you're just anyway. standing in a corner, fuck you. Put on some headphones. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but through all the clamor, I could pick out that whistle and tell you exactly within a second what song that was. Mm. It's just such an iconic and fantastic whistle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, check out Sisyphus by Andrew Bird. All right. And with that, we're going to throw it to our first break. Feel free to stick around and enjoy the totally real commercial or take a minute to enjoy. Or if you really wanted to hear a song from the previous episode, check out the playlist on Spotify. Do you ever find yourself sitting around with an emptiness inside your soul or larger than preferred vacuous space? Would you like to change that? I thought so. Now introducing Stoff. For when you have nothing to do but important things. Stoff. For when you're lacking personality and intrigue. Stoff. When the world has taken a pickaxe-sized chunk out of your heart. Stoff. And if Stoff no longer fulfills these needs, please don't hesitate to look into our life-enhancing product, Addiction. Welcome back. So... Isaac, what is your passion? I don't know why I went Dark Knight there for a second. <laughs> Allow me to hit you with my passion. Uh, I, since the age of... I'm trying to remember when I first got exposed. This was a question that came up in casual conversation the other day. I have been playing Magic since i think the first time i experienced it was when we were at the cabin with our cousins when i was like 
six or eight or something like that. It was either right before or right after Pencil- we moved to Pennsylvania. Mm. And that was my first experience. I had no idea what I was doing. I know the cool kids were doing it, all of our cousins. And I was just kind of like, yeah, I want to play. And I had no idea what I was doing. Got bodied, was annoyed. Uh, and that was my first experience with it. And then I started playing it on junior high with some friends doing the classic like have these like hundred card decks have them like bundled together with uh rubber, rubber bands, bands. Yeah. yeah just like <clears throat> bridge shuffling the crap out of them i'd love to find those cards and see how much they were just like thrashed uh i'm sure they're in a dumpster somewhere sadly but yeah i just like played the crap out of those with friends had no idea how a lot of the card works, so just like tried to use them intuitively. Yeah. Cheated plenty of fa- like unintentionally cheating. Unintentionally, yeah. Just like a couple. Of the, there was a so there's a card that is, um, it's called Power Sync. It's a blue. This is gonna make no sense for a lot of people, so I'm sorry. Uh, it's a blue and X counter target spell unless they pay X. Yeah. If they choose not to or can't, tap all their mana and remove it from the mana pool. What I thought that meant was that you destroyed all the lands <laughs> that they had or couldn't use or something like that. Which, <laughs> yeah, like, the card is, like, would be busted. That would be belief banned that was the instantly. Yeah. That would never get to print. Yeah, it would never, like, yeah, exactly. And so, like, I remember playing that and somebody with a modicum of knowledge is like, I don't think that's how that works. And they asked their cousin, they're like, yeah, you're just wrong. <laughs> I was like, what? And it's like, that's the way my, like, it's the way I read half these cards. It's like, you know, an idiot junior high schooler who just didn't know any better. And that was my first time playing it. And I really haven't, there's been small breaks when I lived in certain areas. I'd still would keep up with, you know, the magic scene like watching coverage and looking at deck lists and stuff like that. Mm. And I didn't really give it up. I think I sold, there are times where I sold a lot of my cards, but I don't think I ever sold all of my cards. I don't know if I have a card that I haven't sold. You know, that was like my first card that I haven't sold. Cause I wasn't that, I wasn't ever thinking in that kind of empire history is forever state of mind sure. ever. So, but I think since I started in junior high, I've had some amount of magic cards to my name and always, enjoyed the game never been like you know fuck this game i'm done with it yeah, yeah. Well, and so what why are you passionate about it like what about it stuck out to you that, that it really got the longevity i guess i i think it's because of my social awkwardness um believe back when i was a kid my mom took me to a, a psychiatrist or something like that and i was mildly and or offhandedly diagnosed with Asperger's and it's knowing that at a certain, like I didn't find that out until I was like sometime in my twenties, I think it really makes sense. It's like one of my biggest problems is, has been like making friends and like social interactions. The idea of like casual social interactions is the most foreign thing to my brain. Yeah. For instance, if my, editor was here would like to you know chip in a sound bite when i first met him so richard and i went to college together uh we both came in on an off semester and i think i figured this out through our introduction classes of you know they we were in a class and okay you know introduce yourself to the class said a little about ourselves and i think i remember that oh one he seems like a nerdy kind of cool guy getting vibes and he said, like, this was his first semester. And it was my first semester. I was like, huh. I remember hearing a lot of interviews of people that went to film school that they would make this friend in film school who became their, like, partner. Hmm. And they work with forever and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, I want that. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't get ahead of me. I was like, oh, this guy seems cool. Maybe he could be, like, my buddy, you know. And so, I hadn't talked to him ever. <laughs> I walk into class one day. He's like there early. I think he, I figured out he lived on the same block as me in student housing. Mm. I was like, Hey, what's your graduation year? And he goes, Oh, I think it's going to be like this. It's like, Oh, that's the same as mine. We should be friends. <laughs> he goes, uh, okay. I'm like, cool. 
And then I, I didn't do, I didn't sit next to him. I didn't say, hey, we should, you know, like, come over, we'll have this. I just then went to the back room and sat down. I was like, cool, made a friend. Like, that's <laughs> the, the way. The checkbox has been fulfilled. Yeah, that checkbox has been filled. Cool. Have a friend. We're going to do lots of things together. And, I mean, he is my editor and one of my best friends. We play video games to get together all the time. He is the reason that this podcast exists. Thank you so much, Richard. I literally could not have done this without you. Um, And the, the funniest thing, <laughs> he then told me the other half of the story was he went home to his mom on, like, some weekend because he lives from... um. Monterey Bay, he lives in like Los Gatos or something up in that region. So it's like less than an hour or about an hour away or something like that. So he went home one weekend or for a break or something like that. was talking to his mom and told the story like, yeah, so uh, this guy like <laughs> wants a big class. His mom's like, well, that's weird. And then a couple weeks later, we had like hung out, eaten food, watched bad anime and like, you know, made jokes about it and had a great time. And we were quickly becoming fast friends and just like done you know, actual friend things. things. Yeah, doing actual friend things as opposed to just <laughs> saying the word passing. I like you. You're my friend now. Okay. You're, you're my friend now. Cool. Thanks. Bye. Um, but one of the things that magic, tying it back into my passion, one of the things that magic allows incidentally is like that one-on-one -on -one interaction that is helpful to make friends in the form of competition. No. So it makes a circumstance where you have a one-on-one -on -one interaction with somebody where you have a shared experience, you can talk about stuff. Uh, there's some kind of competitiveism. And most importantly, is there's a form. Yeah. You know, here, meet this person, sit down, play a game. Sometimes it leads to friendship. Sometimes it leads to enemies. Uh, but it leads to this social interaction that is codified and set up with rules. And it, that gives me so much, that is so much a comfort blanket for me in every single way. Like playing games, don't like having to figure out social interactions of like what do we do now it's like no we're gonna play a game and then after the game we're done and then there's gonna be another round we're gonna play against somebody else and so you're never stuck in this awkward circumstance of what do i do until after yeah but then you've had this experience you can talk about stuff it's usually late so you usually have to go home and go to bed so there's not this like there's it removes all that social awkwardness that i have it's probably still to this day no idea how to fucking parse and it gives me the, these like guidelines to effectively interacting with people with a shared, you know, like or a, a shared hobby yeah. that I can talk about. And it gives me something to talk about. It gives me something to do with them. Sure. And that is definitely like one of the biggest reasons that this has been a passion of mine is because it's helped me just parse this world and make friends and have something to do. There was a, a girlfriend of mine a while back who had... She was really good friends with all of her roommates. And then they all kind of splintered off and went and got their own housing. Yeah. And she was living by herself and was feeling very lonely, understandably so. And she's like, how do you make friends? I was like, because she, she, I had a lot of friends. I did things with them. She's like, how do you make all these friends? I was like, sorry to break it to you. I just play magic. So all, like, I look at my friends list on Facebook or like wherever the people I talk to, some of them I've worked with and a lot of them. I have played magic with almost like the best friends I have. I think of predominantly all come from magic mm. in some way or another. Um, some of them left magic and we still hang out. Some of them, you know, plenty of them still play magic. Cause it's just, yeah. I think uh -huh. in my opinion, one of the best games of all time. And so that's the way a lot of them, like I would say probably like 80, 70% have come from magic. Some percentage have come from, uh, work and some have come from my time in school sure. and that's it like so much of them come from magic because it's like basically the only it's it's like the cheat factor of making friends for me at this point <laughs> and i don't feel in any way like i have to play the game to make friends i do just thoroughly enjoy the crap out of the, the way the game works and yeah. what it allows for but that's definitely like one of the biggest reasons that it is still for sure okay part of my life yeah what is one of the biggest misconceptions about about it from the wider world. Um is that everyone is a fucking fat sweaty nerd. I mean, they're not as wrong as they should be. <laughs> there was a video a random aside to that point. There was this uh Twitter post or Instagram post or something like that a while back at back before back before the before times. A when, long long uh, ago long, long ago when there wasn't this virus wrecking and scaring the earth, uh, there used to be this thing called Grand Prix that were like this, uh, 
they were a huge tournament where everybody could come in. Yeah. And this guy went around and one of the sad misconceptions that tracks not at a hundred percent, but it does track is that there's a lot of fat people that play magic. You know, one we're in America. There's a lot of, fat oh, people. there's a lot of fat people. Yeah. Uh, two, we don't shower. That's becoming less and less true as the years go on, which is nice, but is still tr- sadly true enough, especially when big groups of people gather. It's also true. And just re- almost regardless of fields right, so outside it, of probably like modeling. I also do, um, do want to hit it with the, the kind of asterisk of like, that that stereotype. What when you put four thousand nerds in the same room, it just gets fucking hot and people get sweaty, even if you showered beforehand. Yeah. Just just want to put that one out there. It's like a mitigating yeah. factor. But this guy was going around taking pictures behind people's chairs when they had not worn a belt, didn't wear, didn't buy new pants, and like their ass crack was crack. showing. There's a lot of crack. <laughs> uh, they almost called the CIA. There was so much crack. <laughs> and he stood behind them and took these ridiculously great pictures with like the prayer hands looking very <laughs> just solemnly and just like pristinely into the camera, just like doing these prayer hands behind like all these butt cracks. <laughs> he got in trouble for it. Like magic went after him. It was like put a cease and desist, like, you what? know, banned him, I think, or something. like they took action against him because they like they didn't want their people to be portrayed this way. It's like, oh, well, maybe it's on them to wear belts. I don't know. That one's an awkward kettle of fish to stew up Ugh. but um yeah the, i think that one so misconceptions um i would say it's just like it, it's not that the what people think is untrue i think it's probably just the rate like mm. it, it i mean it's like most stereotypes right it's like there's some amount of truth to it but it's not think, a, it's not a consistent yeah it's it really I'm isn't consistent um, I think one of the other ones is that like, oh, they're all just like living in grandma's basement. Uh, a lot of these people are making like one of the best players of all time is a hedge fund manager at this point. John Finkel is arguably the best player of all time uh, or like tied for it. And um, he's like a millionaire hedge fund manager and has done a bunch of other impressive stuff. Uh, he's made charities. Yeah. Um, one of the other best players of all time is this name guy named Paul Vitor Domodorosa. I believe he is or has become like he one he did it he became one of the best when he was young and I think that's kind of a misconception a lot of people think that's like old like older guys a lot of the best players of all time did it when they were in college and like late high school yeah. that's kind of like the best window because you need a lot of time to devote to this thing that doesn't pay out that much sadly yeah um but I think he is or is be- in like like he I think he went to law school mm-hmm. and like is like has passed the bar I think. I don't know. I, th- that one I can't speak to as much. But a lot of these people, it's like they don't, they don't go on to like live these basement dweller like lame lives. A lot of them, a lot of these people are very smart, yeah. and they go on to do amazing and big things. A lot of them have started game companies or sure. you know this or that. Um, in the community, to a lesser extent, there is this idea that you pay to win. That like the harder to obtain cards are um, just better, which depending upon the area you look at has been true and not true. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was a run this player had uh, named Tom Ross, this fantastic, uh, Vagaman's not the right word, Maverick player Mm -hmm. who very much approached the game differently than a lot of people did. And, uh, very much took it like a gambling, like a gambler's background of like bluffing and exploiting like personable edges. Mm-hmm. This is like back before like poker became just like this solely mathematically uh, driven, mathematically driven thing. And so he was very much looking at understanding people and using that to his advantage. And he very much did. Mm-hmm. And he won like a lot of money and a lot of tournaments on a, a slightly lesser circuit called the SEG circuit, which is predominantly based back east. Yeah. And he was playing decks that were like, it wasn't intentionally like he wasn't like doing it to show that you could play on the cheap, but his decks were just insanely cheap. Uh-huh. Like th- there was somebody that made a joke that he won. I think it was him or it was a deck that was very similar to it. Won a tournament. And it was like beat him with a sock full of pennies <laughs> or, a you know, a knapsack full of batteries. Just like just this guy's got like this beautiful expensive deck and he's just like common common uncommon a rare here and there and just like what it do and just like giving him the beats it's just like beautiful 
I was like, yeah, it doesn't, the best cards are like better individually. Like the rarer the card, the more likely they are to be better individually. However, a deck is a coalition. Yeah, it's, so it's got to be some greater than some of its parts. Exactly. And so a lot of, he was just making these low to the ground aggressive decks that were just taking advantage of this, you know, I'm going to set up and play this really, you know, expensive monetarily and expensive costing card in the game. And he's like, yeah, you're just going to be dead before that happens. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, beep. And it's like, got there. I, the, one of the first big tournaments I won was the world magic cup qualifier in, um, San Jose. I won it with a deck that was, it definitely wasn't like, you know, pennies on the dollar, but it, I think it was one of the cheapest decks. I would love to look up the price of it back then, but it definitely wasn't expensive. Yeah. Um, and it was made by Tom Ross and that qualified me to go to Nice, France, got me thousands of dollars, got me a plane ticket, which took me to another tournament, which won me thousands of dollars. Um, which is also one of the other reasons Solid I continue ROI. to play the game. Yeah. Very much big return on investment on that, like probably like $200 deck or something like that. That is cheap. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it was. Yeah, there was not that many rares in that deck, uh, and just yeah, th this idea that like money buys victory is kind of reduced. I think that's one of the things that I love about not only Magic but, and you can see it in games that you play like um, League of Legends and stuff like that. It's a free to play game. Yeah, it's that. I mean, that one's a bit different. I, but... I mean, I think I think the bigger bigger example that I'd I'd correlate it to would be like Path of Exile. Yeah, where that one is. It it costs you zero to play, but God, if you have information, you play so much better. Yeah. Like if you if you know what the fuck you're doing, because holy fuck, that game is a that game is a kettle of fish in its complexity for reasons. <laughs> but I'm not gonna get into that. Yeah, but I think that's one of the other kind of. I I think that one's like the really cool one. It's just like yeah, I've seen it. It is harder to do. Mm -hmm. but it is it is possible i've yeah. seen great players beat okay players when it's just like they know what they're doing it does matter there's a friend of mine uh, who was on this podcast lafayette kinsey the first time i ever played against him mm -hmm. i was playing a deck that was very good it was like the best deck at the time and he mm -hmm. was borrowing a deck from a friend of his that was a hunk of shit <laughs> like it was like basically i was playing hot garbage uh, I was playing a format that has a, that it's like availability of cards goes back, you know, I think decades at this point, or at least a decade. It's like very old format. It's called modern. Mm -hmm. And he Ironically. was playing a deck that was basically a standard deck with a couple of extra cards. Yeah. Really not that different. And he's just borrowing it from a friend. And Lafayette is a, I think when it comes to strat, we, we both have different strengths and we balance each other out, which is really fun when we're doing testing picking up on each, on each other's brilliance and pointing out each other's weaknesses of like where we make mistakes. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. Um, and watch that. That was my first experience playing Lafayette who I didn't know. And he was just kind of, he was always hanging out. He didn't play magic. And so I, I didn't sadly, I did think lesser of him. I was like, all right, whatever. It's some player turns to find out, come to find out he was like, he was a pro tour grinder. He'd very much been on the train and played at a much higher level than I was used to playing and definitely not what I expected. Mm. And he nearly beat the shit out of me with a deck that was just basically a wad of, you know, a wad of nickels. It was just like, whoa, I like very, like I won, but it wasn't by nearly as much as I should have card quality wise because yeah. he played his ass off. And he very much, I think that was the beginning of our friendship was watching this guy just like really think mm -hmm. and like, expose how casually I've occasionally slumped myself into playing yeah. when I'm not like on it. Yeah, and it was yeah. just like, Whoa, and it was really, really cool. And it's like, that's one of the best things about magic is like play skill can make like, it, it really can jump that yeah. if you're both at the place, same play skill level. Yeah. Better cards are going to most likely not always as talking about Tom Ross, he was playing against like, some of the best players of all time. And just, he was, you know, he exploited a strategy that just didn't cost that much money and just also exploited people's certain willingness to not make certain plays. And he was like, I don't care. I'm crazy. And it was like, just like made these insane plays that like nobody was ready for at the time. And it's it like, how do the, how amazing. do chess champions practice? Oh yeah. It's like, they, they play, play against, amateurs. Yeah. They play amateurs. Cause they're, it's a, uh, yeah, it's, 
They're, un- they're, they're going to be plays. Yeah. The reason while we're on chess, uh, the reason Magnus Carlsen is like one of the best and for a while was actually beating computers or like actually having game against computers where a lot of chess champions hadn't. And this is, I, I pardon if this is not, you know, a hundred percent accurate. This is very much not my fail, but this is what I've heard in passing is that he would again, when playing against computers, he would try these unorthodox openings to keep the computer on its heels. Cause the computer is a machine learning algorithm. It's processing all the information it's gotten before and during. Yeah. But if you present it with an opening that is never seen before, it's effectively, you're putting it in a whole new area. And so it leveled out the playing field and that's how you would approach playing computers. And I believe in his own way, kind of taught himself mm. that like he, he like improved upon himself doing that. It's just like, Whoa, it's like, so fascinating. Although we're not going to get into the whole odd chess scandal that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is very much outside of area. It's, and also the like, nonsense. Yeah. All right. But switching, switching gears from the positive. Let's, let's take a look at the negative. What is your preposterous peeve? So my preposterous peeve is idiots getting lucky. Do you uh, care to elaborate a little bit on that? So back in the day when my brother correctly assessed that I was very much trying to like make poker a thing, there is a lot of variance in poker. Obviously, the better players, you know, you do your best to mitigate that by playing certain ways so that you are not opening yourself up to, you know, you want to increase your win percentage and yeah. in doing so in poker, you reduce your losing percentage. However, there's situations that are just mathematically correct to basically get the money in and then like, you know, let the cards yeah. roll out. In which case, people have been known to get lucky a time or two, you know. Yeah. You play, you roll dice, you know, even if you have all but one number, that one number is going to come up on a D6, you know, one sixth of the time. That is a not not zero nominal amount of yeah exactly it's it's a very realistic percentage and even though you're prohibitively favored it still can happen yeah and it also happens for everybody however my preposterous but only and many other people focuses on the negative and the amount of times i have let that wind me up far past its necessary you know kind of spin cycle oh, is yeah. <laughs> oh he knows oh i know uh, <laughs> there it is very much uh yeah it's especially considering i've if i would like i should just write down the amount of times i get lucky because in in magic it does the same thing you know it's a game with you know it's variants you've got yeah it's got variants you have multiple different cards in your library and you've got a library of 60 cards so your likelihood of drawing them you know diminishes appreciates all that jazz and the amount of times that I've, like, last night, for instance, I was playing Magic last night with a friend, and, you know, top-decked my way out of a, a bad situation and got there. Or, you know, my opponent just, you know, I made a bad decision and then got lucky because my opponent kind of, I guess that one's a little bit skill different, but whatever. The amount of times where you just, like, kind of get there because, whoops, as I'm sure I've given many a story to many another nerd to go back to their friend group and be like, you, you won't believe it. Just, you know, the, the many a bad beat story that I'm sure I've caused, I'm sure is close to the amount that I've experienced. But uh, we don't focus on the ones that I've caused, only uh, ones I've experienced, because uh, I'm the hero I, of only my own story. And, and I want to add a, a big, big asterisk. And it's that the more, <laughs> the more you know the person doing it, the fucking angrier you get if you perceive them <laughs> as a fool. Which, yes. where we grew up, in the the very small magic scene that there was, there were some fools. Um, they were not <laughs> the smartest people. Um, Chris, PJ, and Larry, those absolute <laughs> clowns. I, I think one of them literally. I think one of them was an ICP fan. <laughs> yeah, that would not shock me whatsoever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sure I I ranted many a time. Conveniently, have forgotten the best ones, but uh, yeah, boy, the, the, the best I remember is you losing to Larry and it knocking you out of like the top eight. And just in mm. the car, I could feel you fucking like seething. 
just because <coughs> Larry, I I have serious. I have taken some serious fucking hits to the head, and I do not come across as concussed as that human being does. <laughs> like, oh boy. Um, uh. <laughs> it's like that man wakes up and gets hit in the head with a skillet. Um, <laughs> That's breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just... <laughs> Oh my lord! I thought Isaac was gonna just like turn. I thought you were gonna flip the car around and just drive into Chuck's and just <laughs> try and hit the station wagon. <laughs> Top deck me, why don't you? Will ya? Yeah. Yeah, and then the other because I remember because it was just kind of a constant is when you were playing a lot of online poker. Yeah, um, and you just I think that one brings out the worst because because there's so. Money. <laughs> There's money involved, and there's so much of it, it becomes what? so cut and dried. I, there's times in Magic where it's like, I, I your think, opponent has I no... think part of it is, you just didn't, there wasn't someone sitting across the table from you who would, like, comment oh, yeah. if you started shrieking at them. Yeah, like, that also the, uh, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, being, being removed from that circumstance, definitely, yeah. like, having, I, I mean, it's the same reason that, like, you see these horrific comments on YouTube videos, or yeah, on, like, Reddit like, posts, Anonymity or Twitter. is a hell of a drug. Um, yeah, but just like man, I I could hear you through the wall. Like you, you would get so livid. Like if mom and dad were at home on like Saturday afternoon and you were playing, and just like, are you fucking? He fucking rivered out. Fuck you! Like just out of nowhere, just a sudden spike in volume. Just like, all right. Uh, I wish that was totally removed from my world, but it has only been greatly diminished. Sure, there's plenty of there's plenty of friend that I've driven home from Magic tournament with where they, I I try to reduce it to just a moment, but I'm sure it lives longer than it should in the air. Is, there's, uh, what is, there's there's oh, what movies it's like. I forget what movie it is, but it's fucking Matthew Perry, and it's just I I don't have any context for the rest of the film. I just there's a scene where he's been like chewed out by his wife or something. And he just walks into his gets into his car, and like rolls up the garage door and then just stops rolls it back down and just beats the shit out of his steering wheel in frustration <laughs> just like just like 20 seconds bam 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 slams the horn slam 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 composes it doesn't say a word just composes himself <laughs> like straightens his fucking suit jacket rolls in the garage door, like drives to the end of his like driveway and then stops and you just see him like thrashing again in the front seat and then he just drives away <laughs> No words. Awesome. No words. Yeah. Nothing. You don't need them. It's it's all it's all there. You yeah. feel it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> That's so perfect. Are you have uh, any parting comments about your peeve? Anything that stick out to you, or are you just kind of glad to have blocked them from your from specific instances from your memory? Um, I think the best one. So, story time. Story time. Um, I was playing... This is this was back before... This is back before I knew how to use Skype. I'm sure it existed, but I wasn't uh-huh. using it that frequently. And I was chatting with my friend, uh, JPEG. Yep. Uh, whose name is actually uh, John Paul Georges. Love you, buddy. Uh, I, I'll bet you guys can't guess what uh, band is his parents' favorite. Um, and we're chatting on the phone. I'm, I'm playing poker on my computer... There's actually two good ones that I, that I, <laughs> two good ones that I had with JPEG actually. All right. So story one is we're chatting. I'm living up in uh, Bernie Falls, chatting with them on my computer. Like I've got my cell phone open, mm-hmm. my, my unkillable Nokia cell phone. God bless the damage play that thing would take. Oh, oh baby. Sitting on my chest uh, while I'm like kind of leaning back on my bed backslash love seat. That was the, the, <laughs> my main abode in my house. And I'm just like playing on my laptop and it's, it's deep in a tournament and there's a fair, it's not, it's life changing, but in the most like tawdry fashion. Uh And I get the money in, in a situation that's precarious, but I end up, you know, the cards get turned up when you go all in. I see that I'm way ahead. I'm like sick. Just need to dodge like a two outer going to the river or something like that. Which for those of you that don't know is ballpark 5%. And it just wasn't my day. <laughs> Rolls the two outer. And damned if I didn't. I don't know if I 
said words as much as sound came out. <laughs> and then I just picked up my phone because it needed to die because it was <laughs> the reason that bad things were happening. And I just hurled it and it caught the beam across the room just like as much as I could fling it hits the beam poor JPEG has to just be like wondering what the fuck is he's done wrong I seethe for a moment and then I'm like oh shit that's my only form of communication with anybody hope I didn't break that I go over and since it's a Nokia phone not only is the phone fine barely a dent the the phone is still like the phone call still going <laughs> I pick it up, apologize to his very understandable response because he's been around me for enough time to realize that this is just part and parcel of being around me at this point. Thank you again, JPEG, if you hear this, for sticking around and being my friend through all this stupidity. Uh, but so there was that just nugget of juiciness. I think the other time, again with JPEG, I was crashing on his couch and uh, going back to dealer school. Uh, to get trained to work at the World Series of Poker as a dealer. Uh, and I'm sitting there, I'm playing on his couch, on my laptop, deep in a tournament. Again, for a bit of money, but not for like, I'm not going to like buy a house, I'm not going to buy a new car. It's yeah. get, you know, it's going to put some dollars in my bank account or whatever like that. And lose this pot, I get annoyed, and I take, It's I'm sitting upright with a laptop in my lap, and I take and I grab the screen and I try to put it through my knee. <laughs> Turns out my knee doesn't give that much, but the uh, screen of a laptop sure does. <laughs> I just bent that thing like it like it was a Buick around a tree. Just <laughs> 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 like, ah, fuck. <laughs> I kind of needed that. <laughs> Oh my god, you fucking idiot. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> it, here's the kicker. I then probably less than a minute after ask his roommate who's sitting <laughs> in the corner is not a poker player but has been around me to know that I'm enough of a knobhead to have done that. I go, "Hey, um still playing in a couple poker tournaments. Do you mind if I borrow your laptop to finish them?" <laughs> She gives me this look of go fuck yourself, San Diego. <laughs> and I think I ended up promising to have it sit on a table, only use a mouse, not touch it. And I think I had to pay her some fee like collateral. And promise in collateral just to use it. And that, like, I was like, I'll buy you breakfast. And if I do anything, I'll buy you a new laptop, which I don't think I could have even covered at the time. I was like playing such small stakes and she like only upon J JPEG's promise that he would make sure that like she was paid in full was like, fine. I finished out the poker tournaments, uninstalled the program and then gave her back the computer when I, I think I lost all the rest of them or something like that. Excellent. It's fucking... <laughs> but I'm better now. I promise. <laughs> oh my God. Uh... All right. With that, we are going to head to our second ad break, but don't go anywhere because when we get back, Isaac's going to enter the lightning round. Have you ran out of new stuff to do, rendering your life wholly unsatisfying? Do you have too much time on hand and have no idea what to do with it? Or are you just plain over this existence and wish for a plane with more intrigue? Might I introduce you to Addiction? Addiction deals with all these problems and more. How to meet your significant other's parents and would rather not? Addiction. How to go to work for the third day in a row? Addiction. Rent? Why not? Addiction. Addiction cannot be held responsible for your choice of choosing to imbibe in addiction. Any and all life-destroying fallout as a result of addiction cannot be legally pinned on addiction. But you're more than welcome to try. And we are back. Isaac, are you ready to enter... <laughs> The Lightning Round. This Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> yeah, so I, I need an echo. Like a dramatic... <laughs> oh, there, I think, round, I think Richard... Round. Richard, please. Uh, yeah. Please, make it happen. Yeah, Richard, I think you... <laughs> have fun with that as much as you want. Uh, yeah, I'm ready to do this. All right. Is there any price for you to give up your passion forever? 
No. All right. Uh, would you rather make food or do the dishes? Dishes. I want to be the I want <laughs> I want to be the peasant presented with the meal. Fair enough. I respect it. Mostly because I'm married to a better cook than I am. Um, <laughs> did you ever cheat on a test in school? Uh, I'm sure I cheated on something. I don't know about a test. Hmm. Are you out of touch, or is it the children who are wrong? Children are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying this as a teacher. The children are just wrong. They might be the future, but they're the stupidest future on the horizon. I feel that you were not the first person to have this opinion. Um, <laughs> would you rather have your inner monologue sound like Gilbert Gottfried or Fran Drescher? There's one correct answer to this one. It's it's Gilbert Gottfried. You're goddamn right. If not right. only because so I can hear his voice one more damn time. Yeah. You fool! I don't know if that connotated. If not, look that up on the internet. It's the best clip you'll ever read. The the thing of him reading the lyrics of WAP may be the best thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> it it is very good. Uh, do you create your own thoughts or do you listen to them? I I, I just listen to him. You're having the best day of your life. What happens next? Oh, that amazing thing or something terrible? Something terrible. You gotta, it's you gotta balance it out. Yeah. Is professional wrestling cool or lame? So this one's a mixed bag. I'm gonna say it's like my I appreciate it intellectually as being cool, uh -huh. but it reads as being lame. Fair it's like enough. my my knee jerk reaction. Stub your toe or make small talk with strangers. A small talk with strangers. Do you have a class of 40 students for 5 months or 20 students for 10? 20. I that That is that is the question that you can tell if somebody's been a teacher or not. Yeah. 40 students is fucking nightmare field. 20 students is like yeah. a juggling act you can handle. Yeah. Unless you're like a college professor, then it's like arguably the same, I would imagine. Happiness or glory? I think I esteem for glory. I think I would be better suited with happiness. It's Nicholas... I think I th Sorry. I think, I think happiness. No, no, no. I okay. think it's just happiness. Okay. Is Nicolas Cage the best or worst? I think he's the best. <laughs> if for no other reason than God bless the memes. I Yeah, but I mean, like, so much of it is just like, yeah, he's going full throttle, but so few actors are willing to do go full throttle and go full throttle in a way that it's, like, publishable, if you will. yeah. I mean, there's a thing I heard that, like, acting is just being cra being crazy in controlled settings, and I will will agree that he goes crazy better than most. Fact. Um, would you rather be an omniscient amnesiac or have a nat 20 charisma with halitosis? <laughs> so I think I already know everything. It's also, it's That's a just fucking like... nat 18. Or I guess charisma checks, you can go nat 20. Fair enough. Yeah. I love that's where he went with that. He's like, I was like, is he that's retarded? Not... No, he's not. I'm, I'm, I misread. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I think I know everything already, just inherently. I know that I don't, but my knee jerk reaction is I already know things, and I am not. I do not come across that well. Mm -hmm. And as I host a podcast, and you can't hear halitosis, I think a nat <laughs> twenty would be perfect. Dude, I, I, I take the nat twenty. I take the nat twenty because in D&D that lets you do almost anything. Like yeah. you can get away with murder if you roll a nat twenty. Yeah, uh, you can you overpower you can overpower halitosis with a nat twenty. Yeah, hundred percent. You can make people convinced that they their nose you can doesn't also, work You can correctly. also just step five feet backwards. <laughs> it's not that hard. Your breath doesn't go that far. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, just take just you know fucking personal space and no one cares. Like. <laughs> If we're looking at 20, the girl's already in the bedroom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's getting too creepy. Anyway, uh, yeah. plane flight or road trip? Road trip. I think some of my best like, experiences are literally... Like, plane flights are... Like, road trips have the possibility of being, like, a 1 on a yeah. scale of 1 to 10. But, like, plane flight can almost never be, in my experience, can almost never be a 10, where road trips, like... Sure. When it's with friends, you're going. I mean, like magic, cheap magic players in like the 2000s, 2010s, 
those are the best experiences. The conversations you had, the pit stops you had, the food you ate, the diarrhea you got from the food you ate. It's like, <laughs> it just is, it no, makes the journey. True. Like, it's kind of funny. My knee-jerk reaction is flight, but then I think about it, I'm like, no, road trip does have, like, way more potential for ups. But, like, flight, <laughs> flight is just reliable. Badacha. Like, I'm getting yeah. there. A plane flight is a tweet, a road trip is a book. Sure. A day in or a night out? I think a night out. You don't, there, there's very rarely that you have a day in that's a story worth telling. A night out is just like some of my best experiences that I remember some of the best times with friends was a night out. Sure. Very rarely do you have a day in where you're like, oh, dude, that day we just stayed inside. <laughs> <laughs> Salty or sweet? Sweet. I'm going to have diabetes. Caramel or caramel? It's caramel. Yeah, thank you. I'm not... I don't have the suit jacket to be that pretentious. <laughs> At that point, you're using a smoking jacket. Um, yeah. <laughs> would you rather meet your mortal demise by vicious werewolf or single, single zombie bite? So, this is a very fun question. I think it's just like anybody that... you're Obviously, everybody's allowed to say what they want to say. It's vicious werewolf attack, and here's why. Vicious Werewolf Attack, one, it's over. You're dead. It sucks. Yeah. Single zombie bite is slower, more painful. You have now put the problem on your loved ones, friends, or just random people you're near that they now have to kill you. And yeah. you just have this, like, growing anxiety of eventually you're going... It's like living with dementia or, like, getting hit with a steam shovel. Yeah. It's like, just end it. Sure. Don't be that sentimental son of a bitch who's just like, I want to live a little longer. It's like, why? You're just creating more problems for everyone around you. <laughs> Fair you enough. Fucking dick. Uh, vocal or instrumental? I feel like this is the plane flight versus road trip thing. Instrumental is always going to be good, but vocal has the chance of being dog shit. Look up, you know, your neighbor's band on fucking, <laughs> you know, band camp or whatever. Yeah. But also look up, you know, Sounds of Silence by Simon and Garfunkel. Look up Hurt by Johnny Cash. It's like it, those will stay, those words and the sound that those words create from an artist like that will stay with you forever. Yeah. Could you eat 37 of your favorite food for $5,000 with a one hour time limit? Well, my favorite food isn't rice. So I'm going to guess no. I don't honestly know what my favorite food is. What is my favorite food? I feel like my favorite food might be either like burritos or sandwiches, in which case, fuck no. Uh, so I'm going to say no. I would, I, I would that attitude. <laughs> yeah, it's not with that attitude. If your favorite food is like a dish, do you just have to eat like a plate of it? Like, can we get, like, some tapas orders? Because then maybe I can power through 37. <laughs> Five grand, listen, that that's motivation money right there. I'll do shit. That is motivation money right there. But, like, 37 of even, like, a finger sandwich would be an ask. Like, sure. Like, that's, like, that's multiple platters at, like, a dinner party. Like, L listen, listen. a lot. They didn't say I couldn't vomit halfway through this. <laughs> Purge. I'm going to say, listen, I'll be bulimic for 5k. Done. <laughs> you can take pictures. I don't give a One fuck. Time, there was a trip, or there was a friend's, a friends of a friend's birthday party we went on where uh, there's this movie uh, called The Golden Mile, also done by Edgar Wright, where they go to, they go back to their hometown, they go to 12 different bars and have 12 pints. Yeah. Maybe it's 10. Either way, fucking lot. Uh, we tried to re we tried to reenact this via a uh, friend of a friend's birthday. Yeah. Uh, with all the pubs in downtown Santa Rosa. Yeah. He wisely purged halfway through, had a bunch of pints, went to the bathroom, did a, a, a he had a different word for it. It was a tactical blank. And he wasn't a purge. <laughs> he called it something else. He was in the military, and so this was apparently just a thing. Ta tactical you would do. injection, maybe. Something like that, yeah. And he just went and just intentionally threw up in the toilet, may or may not have done some drugs, and then came back out and powered <laughs> through the rest of his night. I, however, was like, no, we're doing this authentically. 
and at one point had foolishly to stay sober had drank it was like matching water. water oh no was, yeah it's too much liquid bro I have, <laughs> I have stretch marks to this day from that <laughs> night also while i did not throw up that during the experience of that night when i got home luckily none of my roommates were home because i was so shit-faced that i took off all my clothes <laughs> By the time I got to my bedroom, which I found out later as I woke up, walked down the hall and found what looked like somebody apparating to Jesus <laughs> like down my hallway. I also woke up in very coolingly tepid vomit that I was half face down in. And I knew it was tepid not only by temperature, but by the fact that when I pulled my face off it, I could see my face print in the half that luckily I sleep kind of on my side so I didn't suffocate. <laughs> wow, that's disgusting. It uh, was foul. <laughs> so yes, I would not try to eat 37 of my favorite food. I don't need more stretch marks than I already have for my foolish activities. Amazing. All right, and I, I guess do you, do you have a question on the lightning round? Have you, have you? Oh yeah, baby. Okay. All right, I postulate this to you. All right, mine, broth hair. Yeah. You have two hours. Two hours. Would you rather watch a movie you've been craving or the newest six episodes of your favorite series? This is not the last six episodes. There are more after this, but you only get to watch that six and you have to go do something else. Watch the movie. Yeah, same. Yeah, that's easy. <laughs> like, I don't know. And that might need to be amended. Maybe, okay, does it change if it's the last six episodes last of your six, favorite series? It does. Uh, either way, I just want some kind of conclusion. I like conclusions. If you're just offering me one thing that concludes versus one thing that doesn't, like, well. No, I think the, the easier thing is probably like, do you watch the first six of an episode? first six of a series or do you watch the first movie of a trilogy all right let's let's postulate it as that that's a good amendment um, how does that change it for you that makes it a little harder i think i still go movie like and pray it doesn't end on too too harsh a cliffhanger <laughs> yeah i guess it depends how like long the series is because in the dark like being committed to like because if it's the first season of a show, it's probably not, it's only probably got like six or seven more episodes, right? Yeah. And so, like, the amount of time to finish the season. <sighs> I like that change to it. I'm definitely sticking with that change to it. I think. I might therefore go actually six episodes of your favorite series because it's a different time commitment then. I still want to go movie, but I think I, I think I'm logically going six episodes of a, of a series. Okay, it's like there's a particularly wrong answer, right? Yeah. All right, and uh, as we as you start to wrap things up, do you have any plugs or shoutouts you want to give for for people around your uh, content? Yeah, uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter before this thing burns to the ground, uh, I am. <laughs> you got at, two weeks. Um, yeah, you got two weeks until it's just. Pompeii all over again at like Ikes L I K E I K E S is where you'll find me. Uh, I post, um, you know, occasional quips and interesting questions as well as, you know, when this podcast uh, gets released as well as the other podcast, which I co-host with this fine gentleman, Hello. super pros bros, which we put out twice a month. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, and Spotify at, Super Pros Bros, S-U-P-E-R-P-R-O-S-E-B-R-O-S, where we talk about uh, filmmaking, books, and writing, as that is both our... Literary stuff in general. You know, or yeah. media stuff in general. I don't know how quite sum that up. Fiction stuff in general? Fiction. Yeah, sure. Know. But that's uh, where you will find us. Uh, if you if you like the, uh, the kind of interaction here, the, the back and forth, the, if you want more of that, you can head on over there. Yeah, the dynamic does not change that much. Let's, let's be real. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's less one, one person asking the other person just questions, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Do you have any friends or family that you'd like to nominate to come on the podcast so they can suffer too, as you have today? Uh, yeah. Uh, Ryan Walters, uh, Ivan Espinosa, and Joe Landweber. 
I'm coming for you. Uh, he's a Randy Savage. Um. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Eli, for being my guest host today. And a special thanks to my editor, Richard Ashford, and my composer, Joshua Gibbons. And thank you. Yes, you listening at home or wherever you found time to appreciate this. Time is the most precious commodity we have, and I appreciate you spending yours with us. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe, like, or just share with a friend. Every little bit helps. Or if you already have and are out of episodes to listen to, don't worry. We put out a new episode every Monday at midnight on... SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes at Passionate People and Preposterous Peeves Podcast. And a very special thanks are due to our patrons, Sabella Yellow. And if you'd like to join Set Illustrious Ranks and have your name read aloud, just head over to patreon.com backslash Passionate People and Preposterous Peeves Podcast. And remember, folks, you think if birds spoke words, we'd miss their singing? Or would we just whistle when amongst the thistles more frequently? <laughs>